All right, everyone, I'm back again. As always, continue on with the cross. You know, one thing I didn't realize as a Christian people, you know, your testimony is important. And a lot of people don't realize that. I think because they don't want to. But you know, one person I, I that helped me realize your testimony is important in the Bible is Hosea. If you read Hosea's story from the beginning to end, now I'm saying I can relate to Hosea. I can relate to a lot of people in the Bible, and I'm sure you can too. But if you relate to the story of Hosea, God told him to marry a woman of whoredoms. And if you read Hosea, think about what Hosea talks about a lot adultery. Committing hoarders against the Lord. He used what he was going through with his wife to spread the scripture and it worked out perfect. And I'm sure I think about it, I was like, man, I guarantee you some of the people of Israel made fun of Hosea. Just like they do with other men of God. Man, you can't even, how you gonna spread the gospel? You can't even keep your wife at home. Now I'll be like, whoa, I can relate. I can, I can relate to that. You understand? Because Hosea wasn't meant to stop. Even though he was told to be with this type of woman. Yet, he persevered. So you got to look at other people's story. Even when in David's prayer, what did David talk about? When my enemies came upon me. And that's how some of your prayers are going to be. Lord, when my enemies came upon me, they all fell. They was dispersed, Lord Jesus. Your story is important. You're in the Bible too. Not necessarily... Your life story is in there, but you got to think about it. He talks about us. He talks about it. Not one of the, the people in the Bible testimony are exactly the same. Why do you think Matthew, Mark, Luke, John is different? And they saw the same thing, but it's different. Ain't that amazing? So that's why we can't look at other people's story like, this is what God taking me through, so you got to be going through the exact same thing. Not necessarily. It doesn't work that way because everybody got different jobs to do for the Lord. What he said, one person build up, one person planted, another person build on it. Another person build upon that. Do you understand? So that's one thing that'll keep you from doing is being high minded. Like I hear people, I go over there, y'all need to be doing what I'm doing. No, I don't need to be doing what you do. I need to be doing what God told me to do. You understand? And that's what you got to look at things like that. You remember I always bring up the story when uh, uh, Peter's trying to find out what was going on with John. What you going to have John to do? I ain't got nothing to do with you, Jane. I mean, Peter. You just feed my sheep. How about that? You always worry about what John do. That's been your biggest issue. <laughs> and that's a lot of our biggest issues. Trying to worry about what somebody else needs to be doing. And forget to look in the mirror and be like, uh, I ain't doing some things I need to be doing too. But we quick to point the finger at what somebody else is doing. And we need to stop that as Christians. You know what I'm saying? We need to stop that. Thinking that our mission is greater than the next man's. When our mission should be the same. To lead people to Jesus Christ. Now, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the fruit of it. We all about leading people to Jesus. That's it. Lead people to Jesus so they can realize what they need to be doing in Christ. What they need to, they'll realize it because they're going to develop a personal relationship with God themselves. You understand? You know, and guess what? A lot of times you're going to have to minister to people when you're in your worst situation. You know what? That strengthens you, though. Just imagine if you can still talk about God to other people while you're going through hell and high water yourself. You know God got you. I know he got you. Man, somebody gonna be like, how he got you? You can't even get you can't even get your house. I know he got me. That's cool. That's great. He got you too. I'm just going through this for now. And I'm gonna go through whatever God wants me to go through. And nobody can't tell me otherwise. You understand? Nobody knows. The Bible said, I know the thoughts I think towards you. He didn't say your pastor know the thoughts he think towards you. You got to think about it in the book of the prophet. The prophets address the people. So in that case, there was a, a broad message for every for the multitude. But in reality, a lot of times a prophet may just come to you singular. Think about it. Have you read the Bible? When David messed up, God sent the prophet to him singular to tell him about what's going on with him. Samuel and Eli, 
God sent the prophet to Eli and also sent Samuel to Eli to tell a message to who? Eli. God told a message to Noah. Right? He said he went to, went to Abraham. Leave home. He didn't tell everybody else to leave home. He told Abraham to leave home. You see, you got to read the Bible and see that God has a mission for you. Different missions. So, the only way you can truly develop that personal relationship with God is you got to keep seeking of himself. You know, think about it, people. If the Jesus tells you to pray like this, right? If Jesus tells you to pray like this, our Father, which are in heaven. If Jesus tells you to pray like this, and you're like, I don't like that prayer. I know it's a better prayer out there than that. Wow. If you're willing to think you can pray, I'll pray Jesus Christ. Something is wrong with you. <laughs> I'm just being real. If you think you don't have to utilize the Lord's Prayer, when Jesus told you multiple times, this is how you pray. And a lot of people don't, and they wonder why things ain't going how they should be in their lives. They leave Christ out. Think about it. Leaving his prayer out. That's why I say it every day so other people be like, whoa. I remember going to church back in the day, man. You know, the Lord's Prayer was said in every church service when I was growing up. I don't know what, our oh, Father. I learned how to sing the Lord's Prayer before I learned how to say it. You understand what I'm saying? And what makes people think they don't need the Lord's Prayer right now? Jesus even utilized it. Nevertheless, Lord, let your will be done. That's what it's about. It's not about, Lord, let my will be done in my life. Lord, I know I'm supposed to have a a mansion by now, whatever. Pray the Lord's Prayer, and what's meant for you will come. I'm not telling you you can't pray other ways. Yes, you can, but Christ tell you how to do that too. Go in your closet. He said, don't be like the hypocrites do. He also tell you not to use vain repetitions. So let's say God say don't use vain repetitions. And you go in the uh, closet and you pray. And you're like, Lord Jesus, touch my son, Lord Jesus. 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 Jesus. Like I told you not to use vain repetition. You said, touch your son. That's all I need to hear from you. Touch your son. Touch him. Now you see, sometimes repetition for his mercy endure forever. But he was talking about different things. His mercy endure forever. Think about it, he said, vain repetition. <laughs> vain. Really? All you got to do is pray very simple to the Lord for whatever you're going for. I think some people think you got to pray for six hours. You can seek God for six hours. Now, God put it on your mind to pray for six hours. That's, on, that's between you and God. But you can seek God for six hours. You can. You can pray for six hours. Meditate. The Bible tells us to meditate. You know, praying always about what you say. But trying to hear God's voice, that means being still and shutting up, shutting up sometimes. God tell me that all the time. I'll be in the car just running my mouth, trying to talk to the Lord. Hey, Houston, you want to hear from me? Shut up. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll shut up. I'm telling you, you know, a dog will never tell you to shut up. Well, you telling me to be quiet, the same thing to me. Be quiet, be silent, be still, and know that I'm God sometimes. Right? So people, like I said, don't beat yourself up. There are going to be people that are put in your life to betray you. There are going to be people who are put in your life to be with you. Just like with Jesus, when he went to the cross, everybody had to leave him. The Bible even tell you, be not friends with the world. Because friends will leave your side. They even left Jesus' side. But guess who didn't leave Jesus' side? God. Even though he said, Father, why have you forsaken me? He had, he's not really forsaken Jesus, he gave Jesus the forgiveness of the world on his body, and he had to accomplish that through him. And a lot of things you're gonna to have to go through some stripes too for God to accomplish what he wants to accomplish through you in your life and in your path and in your testimony and in your walk as a child of God. You understand? Like we read the Bible, we do get it like these are the only people that God talked to in the Bible is these people right here that we see. Wrong again. <laughs> so if you think that something is wrong with you, it's thousands and millions of people in the world. Those, this book is about Jesus Christ lineage and the story, the basics. It don't tell you everything. It don't tell you every name of everybody that called on God. It don't. My name ain't in there. 
I try to find my name of Houston. That's a hard name to find. I don't know where that come from. Hughes Town or whatever. Some of y'all names may be in the Bible, but that don't mean you in there. You understand what I'm saying? But think about it. If you're in the Lamb's Book of Life, you kind of in the Bible. You're in the Bible. But the thing is, you can get your, your name taken out the Lamb's Book of Life, too. You know, that's why you work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Because you want to do the right things by God. Make sure he keeps you on the right path. Going the right way. And not only that, you want to get stronger in Christ. So what? So your prayers even become strong. Even so, he said, don't turn the people away. Let them be healed. Who is he talking about? You. And me. You understand? You want to grow so much in Christ that... You have the ability, the ability to heal in the name of Jesus Christ. And they have been healed. But that's the thing is, I believe it's made more healers in the world than people think. But the thing is, a lot of them ain't broadcasting on Facebook. They ain't letting their right hand know what their left hand is doing. God has sent them to somebody's house random to pray for them. And then you hear about them the next day and they're doing well. And they ain't like, guess what happened? Guess what I did yesterday? We found that error before. You remember in the Bible? When uh, the disciples went back after Jesus sent them out to cast demons and heal and do that. He was like, even the devils are subject to us. He was like, hey man, don't glory in this. Glory that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So we ain't got to sound a trumpet about the deeds that God used us to do. All we got to do is do them. And that's hypocrisy. And I see Christians do it all the time. Talk about everything that they do. And I'm like, Lord have mercy. Do they even read the Bible? You understand? Keep a lot of your stuff secret. God say I was reward you openly to what you do in secret. Because you're not trying to get the credit. You're trying to give who the glory? To God be the glory. Not to Houston be the glory. Not to you be the glory. Not to your pastor be the glory. To God be the glory. That's what it's about. Then you'll start realizing, hey, I ain't got to sound a trumpet all the time. All I got to just do what God wants me to do. Because God sees what I do. And God sees what you do. Think about it. He see what you do good and bad. So think that in mind too. A lot of people are like, God, see my good deeds. Yeah, he see your good deeds. Guess what else he see? All your bad deeds too. That's why you need to stay prayed up. You understand? Think about all these people that go on TV and show all the good stuff they do. But they've been a broadcast. Look, I'm filming right now. This poor person wanted some money and I didn't give them nothing. Why, why, why they don't post that too? Because I guarantee you, they ain't going through everywhere. Handing out jobs to every homeless person, every wet person you pass by. So if you're going to show one part, show the rest. And I ain't got the money to take. And I'm just being real. But that's the world. That's the world, though. We love when to broadcast everything good that happens in our life. But we don't know what to talk about. I can't tell people that my wife just left me as a Christian. They're going to make me look bad. And read the Bible. There ain't no person in the Bible that went through a perfect life with no problems. That don't mean you stop calling on God. And I st that's why I think a lot of Christians are confused. And they idolize people because they're like, man, I want to be like them. They never go through nothing. They never go through nothing. They live in a perfect Christian life. And I only see them for an hour a week. But I got to know. I, I bet you that's how they live 24-7. I bet you I want to be like them. And God's like, little children, keep yourself from idols. They are not telling you everything. You don't see everything that's going on. They only tell you what I want them to tell you. They got things they go through in their life. And I wish they would talk about it sometimes. So you can look at them and be like, wow, my preacher go through stuff too. But when you see your pastor act like he don't go through nothing, you thinking a Christian don't supposed to go through nothing, which goes against scripture. When the Bible says the righteous shall suffer. So if you got a preacher up there saying he don't suffer, he might be working with the devil. But anyway, because it's lying to you. My life is great. Me and my wife never argue. We perfect. All right. Yeah, right. I saw how sister so-and-so was looking at you yesterday. At Sunday's service. <laughs> y'all had some words before y'all got in this book. And that's understandable. Because sometimes it happens to me. And sometimes it happens to the best of them. It is what it is. You know, we don't know the future, but we do know our future. To give, Jesus wants to give us an expected end. 
God wants to look out for us to help us fulfill our purpose. Think about it. What it's really about. So it's, you want to leave here and fulfill your purpose. Like, think about this. He told David, he said, I know when you was alive, I know it was purpose in your heart to build a house for me. Look what he told David. It was purpose in your heart to build a house for me and for yourself. But I know you about to die. And I'm going to get that, that to your son. And David had faith that God would continue on that what he didn't finish. So a lot of stories, our stories are not gonna finish with us. You know, I could be making music for the rest of my life and it might extend over to my son or somebody else to make music for the Lord. You see, a lot of y'all want to receive the promise, but you think everything gotta go through you? No, read the Bible again. You, whatever you can, God wants you to fulfill, you will fulfill. David couldn't fulfill that part, but he, he was in his heart to do it. A lot of times, you think of people like, you're going to recognize your dreams. You know you're going to die when a lot of your dreams not fulfilled. The dreams that God had for your life are not going to be fulfilled. They're going to be fulfilled through somebody else after you. Remember that. So don't beat yourself up. Like, I think about that all the time. Lord Jesus, a lot of things I want to accomplish before I leave here. Houston, just keep doing what you're doing. You keep doing what you're doing. What I want to accomplish through you is going to happen. Some, who I want to accomplish through somebody else is going to happen. Keep spreading them seeds. Keep spreading them seeds. Because <laughs> them seeds are going to work. Because she said, my, my word will not return void. Keep spreading those seeds of righteousness. And keep telling the truth. Remember this, people. You know why I try to be truthful with y'all? Because God keep telling me, no lies of God. If I sat here and lied to you and say I didn't do this or do that and I did, the best way for me to communicate and preach the gospel is to be truthful with it and to tell you exactly and show you exactly how I am. If I go anywhere other than that, it's kind of lying. And there's a lot of lying preachers out there. A lot of lying teachers out there. I'm telling you, be real people. You know, there have been many times in the morning I'm like getting ready to get to the car. Me and my wife started arguing. And God was like, I'm God's like, make another video. I'm like, man, I really don't want to make a video right now. I'm mad as I don't know what. And God give me the strength to keep going. How you know God is for you? Because you're still going. Because you're still praying. You're still doing what he wants you to do. Yes, you have times of sorrow. You have times of sadness. But you also have times of joy too. Just remember, you're going to deal with all of it in this world. And it's, the thing about it is, it's only gonna get worse for Christians, true believers. It's only gonna get worse. You know, uh, just stay focused. Keep your eyes on Jesus, no matter what. He know what's going on. He know what you're gonna do. And if you haven't received, accepted Jesus Christ in your life, I advise you to do so. You can do it right now. You gotta wait till Sunday. You can do it right there while you're at. Jesus, come to my heart and soul. You know, I don't know exactly how to do it, but I believe God knows. You know, most people are like, this is how you do it. Uh, well, okay, let me tell you how to do it. Call on Jesus. <laughs> That's how you do it. Call on Jesus. Very simple. You know what I'm saying? Think about how many people have called on Jesus in a certain way and God came in right on time. Because the thing is, that's just the entrance to the process. And people, again, continue to pray for me. And if you need prayers, you got things on your chest, get it off. Don't be scared to tell people what's going on in your life. You understand? Let people know you're not perfect. Let them know that I'm a Christian that's not perfect and still a Christian. I think that's amazing. Have a blessed one.